Okay. Uh, don't have much of a much of a statement here uh, or an opening. Just to uh, say that the first day was uh, really good. It was. You can see they leveled up. Uh, guys studied um, and really knew uh, the execution was was good for the first day for sure. You can see that uh, preparation really paid off for that. And that's that's uh, outstanding by those guys. And really, this whole process is going to be learning our team. You know, we're just trying to learn our team so we can understand the skill sets we have, the continuity of each group. Um, different personnel groups on offense, defense, uh, different you know, uh, personnel groups and special teams and just really know our team by the end of this whole, whole thing. And, and really, why are we doing that? So we could get the skill sets in the right position, okay? So we can leverage those skill sets, okay? To find our winning formula. That's what we're doing here. So um, you'll see some different combinations uh, during the course. Of course, you know, the personnel groups, you'll see that with receivers. but. Even on the offensive line, you'll see a little bit of that. You'll see different rush groups in there because um, you know, four equals one when you're rushing the quarterback. And so we'll do a lot of that during this process. And uh, what that does is that gets experience and exposure for all these guys, okay, especially the quarterback, right? And we're going to give them variations of all coverage, all blitz, all everything he sees, fronts, and everything he's going to see during the course of the year. And uh, that's by design. Uh, so he gets that exposure and experience to that. And that was my point yesterday really about talking about, hey, the preseason reps are important. I know everybody's, you know, uh, preseason bugaboo on that. You know, like, holy Moses. Okay, but, however, those are important. Like I said, equally important because, you know, you get to see different skill sets and all that, but it's probably going to be a little bit vanilla, but you'll see the speed and all that other stuff. And our joint practices for, for our joint practice versus Cincinnati is going to be awesome. That's another opportunity. Um, but the practice against our guys is the bulk of it. And uh, that's going to be fun to see. And I told our guys yesterday, we need to have elite competition, elite competition during this camp. And uh, the way to do that is you have to take care of your body first so you can be available and out there, right? So the schedule is, is good for those guys. They can take the morning, get on the, get on the tables with the strength staff and the performance staff to get their bodies right. And then take, take the evening also uh, during that process to get ready because uh, we need, need everybody available to have that elite competition. So... Uh, Questions. Preseason reps. What's that? Pre so preseason reps. With Caleb, kind of balance out what he needs versus maybe some of your vets don't need and probably don't yeah, want it. That is a balance act. That's a great question, Herb. Uh, it is a balance. You know, you talk about a guy, for example, like Keenan. You know, he's been playing for a long time. You know, is he going to get reps? You know, we'll just have to discuss that. You know what I mean? And uh, but you're always looking at the line, right? The protection part part of it. That that's the big piece of it. And we'll just see where it is. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. You know, he play. I think when he's he's told me uh, the other day. I said, man, you got a body. His body looks like a like a big safety, right? Almost. You know, he's. And I said, well, he goes, I played running back. He, I said, and then he said, I also played linebacker. I said, oh, geez. I said, you must be a tough guy. You know. So, uh, but he is. He's a tough guy, and he he's got good quickness. You know, you saw that right there. He got good quickness. Obviously, uh, good athlete. On the other side of that, the instincts for Dexter to have this. I think he's the one who tipped the pass. Um, you know, I don't know if he actually tipped it. Dexter's like as big as a mountain, so it might have hit him right, right, might have hit him right in the chest. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, uh, Brian didn't mention Gerald Everett yesterday. Was yeah. that an unexpected thing that popped up? After no, that? it wasn't. It wasn't. It was something that uh, we we knew from training. It was from training, and we'll see where it goes. It's day to day. We'll see where it goes. It's not nothing major. Um, so. You know, that, that's where it is. And we saw some Larry Borm at left tackle today. It was Braxton limited? Yeah, so we got a couple guys that will be limited uh, to start. It will be uh, TJ Edwards, okay, and it will be Braxton. And that's also from the summer training. Uh, but, you know, we'll see where that goes. Uh, it's nothing major. You see, I saw them out there and walked through. They're moving around, so they're close. You know, so we don't know how long that's going to be. The training staff will decide that. Do you expect well that long? We do. Yeah, we do. Okay, you, uh, but, again, that could – you know, when you're flying to some place, you know, there's a thing called uh, air traffic control. So it's like he may get delayed, he may get canceled. So that may happen. When you talk to your guys about leading from the front, what does that mean to you and how does it show itself in what you want? Yeah, so I talked to the really the three things that I talked to the guys about that when leading from the front is first of all, you got to be able to perform at an elite level. You know, so leading from the front, you know, if you're the head chef, guess what? You got to know how to cook, right? You got to be able to perform and do your job you know, at elite level. So that's number one. The second thing is to be able to compete. We want people that are alpha in terms of the competing. 
um, alpha in your room, alpha in the league, and let's go compete at the highest level. And the last thing is, is be a great teammate. You know, you have to be able to do a lot of things to be a great teammate. You know, you have your private conversations where you're encouraging somebody, or maybe you're challenging them, and maybe it's in front of everybody sometimes. you got to be able to ebb and flow and have the instincts to be a great leader. Uh, so really those are the three things we talked about. Are there specific guys to do that, or is that kind of a... No, I, I, I am looking for specific guys, uh, and I, I have conversations with each one of those guys, and I have conversations with the guys that are emerging leaders too. You know, I'll bring them in my office, we'll talk, and we'll talk about what that means uh, for where you are right now, and then because uh, you're always in the development phase as a coach. You're developing, obviously, the skill sets and all those things and the fundamentals and knowing the scheme and all that, but more importantly, from the, you've got to lead from the inside out. Our, if our team's going to be strong, it's got to be strong from the inside out, and then you got to develop those guys that are just coming in, the young guys, uh, as leaders as well. Man, what, what specifically have you guys done to mold Montez Sweat from being a very good pass rusher, but to become the type of pass rusher that you guys want to fit all of your criteria, including conditioning and things like that? Yeah, he came back in great condition. That's that's the number one thing. Uh, he looks like he's in great shape. Uh, conditioning test today at practice, which. That's the first thing. So he can put more good reps together and stack those reps, be out, you know, whatever it is, eight, ten, whatever it needs to be, um, where we want them to go to. Because really for him, it's about being, getting that consistent get off. You know, because once he does that, it's it's over. You know, so I, I think he when he does that, he's going to be elite and be dominant. Does anyone stand out? Does anyone stand out of the, the emerging leaders that you just named? Does anyone catch your eye? Yeah, I mean, you know, they're emerging, so you know, I just want to see who will grow into it. Um, but, yeah, I'm not going to name names, but uh, it's throughout the whole team. I think, you know, I always said the first rule of leadership is leading yourself. You know, be the great example, okay, that you want to see in your teammates. Um, and that goes in family life, too. You know, be the great example of what you want to see in your family. And uh, I tell them that uh, same thing as well. But, uh, yeah, there's several guys that are there. Matt, you, said, Matt, you said everyone leveled up over the summer. Caleb specifically, where did you see him level up? Yeah, just a general operation, right? You know, first of all, you know, uh, you know there's a, we gave him a lot. You know, during the spring, you know, so and then in the summer, same thing, you know, so formation, motion, understanding a concept, uh, you know, run kills, run, you know, killing it to run, killing it to pass, uh, alerts, all those things uh, were, were a couple levels up and you could see it. And how do you see it? You see it in the execution. They were in and out of the huddle. You know, I think we only had one today where they weren't um, and it was much better. Yeah, when, you, when you watch practice or when you watch film of practice, how can you tell that you're getting elite competition this year that perhaps you didn't that was different from what you saw last year. What yeah, you'll be able to you you'll be able to feel it. You'll be able to feel it. It's something that's palpable. You'll be able to feel it when you're out there. You'll see it. You know, you just got to be able to. It'll be you know Keenan going against you know DJ going against one of them corners. You'll you'll see it uh, in the pass rush. You'll see it. You know, and, and we're going to really foster that and making sure. And the guys want to. They want to do that because they know that to get ready for the first game, uh, we're going to have to be sharp. You know, and so that's that's a big part of that is that competition. Yeah, that's that spot, that spot mean, where you uh, see the biggest difference. The spot you just mentioned, the wide receivers going against corners. You have potential Pro Bowl talent or Pro Bowl talent going against Pro Bowl talent. Pro positions. Yeah, that would be my answer. Yeah, that's the most Hon honestly, honestly, yeah, that's that's it, that's it. You know, because when it gets like that, because you have guys that are in that position, they're in that position for a reason. Why are they with that way? Well. First of all, when you talk about elite guys like that, they're very, uh, how do I say it, like uh, very comfortable in their own skin. You know, they have, they have very good clarity of who they are, right? And so when that happens, they're able to really understand, okay, here's where my weaknesses are, but here's how I can fix them, okay? And then I can even look over to the other side and say, hey, here's where the limitations of this other player is, okay? Because they're comfortable in their own skin, be able to do that and critique themselves. But they are also believing themselves at a very high level, and that's where the competition comes. So yeah, it's going to be exciting to watch. Uh, understanding there's going to be rotating and competition at center. What, what do you like about Bates in that spot, and in particular alongside Caleb, the young quarterback? Yeah, we, we ask our centers to have really good movement skills, um, you know, and, and be very intelligent. Movement skills in, in such a way because you can. We run a lot of inside outside zone. We're jumping to the second level to the linebackers, so they got to be able to get on them and stick on them and stay. So uh, he has that, and then. The ability to make the calls, right? Move the protections, you know, when need be. Communicate, be a great communicator, and uh, that's what that's what Batesy does. Man, a schedule question. A, a schedule question for you. We didn't see family fast at Soldier Field on the camp schedule this year. What went into the decision to not have that? Um, concert, I believe. I believe it was a concert. 
You know, um, I wish that we had it. I, I love that experience, you know, because it's great for the players to be able to get in there and do that. You know, so um, just didn't work with the Hall of Fame game and where the schedule fit and how the sequencing of practices and days off worked out this year. Are you saying, that, are you saying just to clarify, there was one day where it would fit your schedule and that day it was? No, I think it was a couple. I think it was a couple days. Uh, that was way back when we were putting the schedule together. So I don't actually remember all the particulars, but I think it was a couple days.